Song from my cell. Um, I've been away for a, a while from this um, platform, the stage. Um, off in Spain, actually, for a week. It was lovely, swimming every morning. Uh, just as the sun was coming up in the very warm waters. And then when I came back to Ireland, I realised I, I kept swimming. I was, I'm just back, actually, a few hours ago from a swim in the Atlantic, an early swim in the Atlantic. It was, and a lady said to me afterwards, isn't it amazing how warm the water is? Still, you know, and it is. And it was wonderful because the waves were crashing again. You couldn't swim because the waves were so high, but uh, it was invigorating getting crushed almost by these massive waves. Um, and of course, I've been singing all the time as I always do. And um, people are probably wondering why I put up the last uh, item up on the up on this platform before I left. Um, but a friend sent me a, a link to that video a long time ago. And um, there's a wonderful section in it where um, the critic Steiner um, backs up a theory that I've had for years, that the whole symbolist movement and poetry was kind of off the wall, really and led a whole generation completely astray. Uh, I believe this for so long, I actually wrote a full work on it. It's, it's called Modern Heresies. And of course, the word heresy you now in our day would be considered sacrilegious almost to use it. After all, the abuses of the, of the word down the years. But uh, I think I'm going to stick to my guns and call it that. And it's now part of a, an overall book that I've been working on for years called God's Tongue. And it comes in two parts. And the first part is um, Modern Heresies. And, uh, and this is the prologue. For, or it's not, it's the epilogue from the, from the work. It was going to be the prologue at one stage, but I think I'd save it for the end. And it's called The Resurrection of the Rose. This is what Steiner said. I think I know when the modern age began. It was when Mallarmé wrote in a notebook in the spring or winter of 1874. A word called rose has no smell no branch, no colour, no thorns. And because of that, it can be used in language. When the renowned Franco-Jewish-American literary critic George Steiner made this comment during a TV, a BBC TV debate on modern literature in 1987, the look of disdain on his face silenced his fellow panellists. After a friend sent me a link to the YouTube copy of the discussion some time back, the gravity of St Steiner's statement and the look of horror that accompanied it stayed with me. But it wasn't until recently, after mulling over it for a year or more, that the literary bombshell det detonated in my head when I realised that the assertment, the assert, the assessment was the final piece of evidence I needed to copper fasten the argument that lies at the heart of this prose work, Modern Heresies. Prior to this, the only other authoritative literary figure I could find to back up my belief that Mallarmé's symbolist credo on poetry was misguided, to put it mildly, um, was Leo Tolstoy. And Tolstoy's criticism of the renowned French poet, as explained in my Tolstoy essay in this work, Modern Heresies, is buried in his obscure and controversial book, What is Art? Which few, if any, literary figures that I'm aware of seem to even know about. 
On the other hand, some of the most renowned poets and writers of the 20th and 21st century, including Paul Valery, T.S. Eliot, Wallace Stevens and Ezra Pound, to name just a few, not only endorsed Mallarmé's godless creed, but acted like it was the only poetic road to follow to resuscitate what they perceived as the comatose culture of the time they lived in. Stick with me now. You know, I know it's kind of dense, but uh, it's getting to a point. To some extent, poetry was revitalised by the symbolist movement for a short spell. Italics used to emphasise the mesmerising interpretation of the word spell. But cracks in its fancy facade began to appear when T.S. Eliot felt compelled to hand over the dense manuscript of the wasteland, one of the most highly prized works of the entire modernist movement, to Ezra Pound to put shape on it and try and make sense of the com complexity of its labyrinthine reaches, which baffled Eliot himself so much in composition he suffered mental collapse trying to complete it. He wasn't aware of this himself at the time, but the atheistic aesthetic that lay behind Malamé's modernist manifesto, which Eliot himself had come to spearhead with his earlier works, including Prufrock, literally led him into the wilderness of the wasteland. And it took another poet, Dante Alighieri, to guide him out of the meaningless symbolist maze and give him a new lease of poetic life by reconnecting him to belief in God. When Mallarmé, when Mallarmé sucked the lifeblood from the word rose and left it withered on a lifeless stem without scent, colour or shape, a dead thing devoid of meaning its metaphorical history symbolically murdered by his pen. Ironically, it took one of his keenest admirers, T.S. Eliot, to, res to resurrect the dead flower after his confession in the final part of the four quartets by combining Dante's romantic tropes of flame and flower to make an allegorical comparison with the rose that Eliot planted at the end of his most meaningful composition, Little Gidding, with Julian of Norwich's famous adage on divine forgiveness acting as a trellis to support the metaphorical emblem of living love. And all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, when the tongues of flame are infolded into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one. Both Dante and T.S. Eliot helped me resurrect the rose in this, the finest song that ever came to me. Um, yeah. It's called Flame. red petals drop like blood that won't stop from a wound and then the flower without any power lies ruined for the heart is the same the stream in the vein gives it life flow and it won't go for blood is the source of all that force in the beat and 
body and soul needed to roll for heat on fire won't glow if wind doesn't blow on the hearth the yellow blaze smolders and fades and you're left to poke at the cinders and smoke that remain but without air you would despair of the flame listening in and uh, please pass it on and hopefully I'll come back again soon maybe with more songs from modern heresies um, we'll see